Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Pointwise Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use translational extrusion. In fact, I'll show you a two-dimensional example and then a three-dimensional example. Let's start out with a simple 2D airfoil. This example I have here is made up of three connectors. We have one for the upper surface of the airfoil, we have another for the lower surface of the airfoil, and then we have one, a tiny one, at the trailing edge of the airfoil. I'll push F2 to zoom back to extents. If this airfoil looks familiar, that's because it's the airfoil from our 2D airfoil tutorial. What I'd like to show you now is how to extrude all of these connectors into the spanwise direction to create a simple rectangular wing. Let's first start out by selecting all of the connectors. With the left mouse button, I'm going to draw a selection box that will grab all of the connectors. And then I'll go up to Create, Extrude, and Translate. Pointwise is asking us a question right now. And that is, do we want each of those connectors to generate their own unique domain? Or do we want as many connectors as possible to basically combine to create maybe one domain? Well, to demonstrate how to do this, let's go ahead and assume that we want one domain per connector. So we start out by deleting all edges, this button right here, and then we're going to build it back up. I'm going to select the connector on the upper surface. I will push the Save Edge button. Now I'll select the connector on the lower surface. I'll push Save Edge. And of course, don't forget the trailing edge connector. I'll push Save Edge. All right, now we're done defining all of these unique edges, and we'll push Done. I'm going to go ahead and push the F2 button that will zoom to extents. Since we're going to extrude in the Z direction or span direction, um, I'd like to be able to see that, so I'm going to rotate the view a little bit. You can either use the View Cube, or you can use the Control and Right Mouse button. Let's see, I'm going to shift it up here a little bit. Let's see what we've got here. We wanted to extrude in the Z axis, so there's a button here for direction. We'll push just the uh, Use Z axis. We can see we're getting an indication here. It's parallel with the Z axis displayed there. And let's go a distance of 10. Let's put uh, a lot of steps there. Let's, let's take 50 steps to get there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Oof, that's pretty long. You know what? Let's go a distance of five. Let's see what we get there. All right. I'd like to be able to see this. Let's go ahead and push run. And we can see, look at that. We saw the extrusion work really well. And look at that. We took our two dimensional airfoil and we translated it into a rectangular wing. Pretty darn cool. Let's go ahead and do a 3D example now, and this is actually going to be a kind of a pseudo 2D example. And I say that because a, a lot of the solver codes these days, if you would like to just run a simple 2D airfoil through it, um, you actually have to feed it a block that has one cell of thickness. So you can't, it can't be completely flat, uh, planar, truly two-dimensional. Uh, that is some of the solvers, not all of them. But for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to take all these domains and we're going to extrude them, but we're only going to do one step. So it'll be basically one step thick. So let's go ahead and select our domains. And we have this, I should mention, this domain out here is actually emanating from the trailing edge. So just to point out where that's coming from. So I'm going to make sure we select both domains. And let's go into Create, Extrude, and Translate. We're going to get an interface that's somewhat analogous to the previous 2D example. You know, previously it was basically, do you want the result to be multiple domains or just one single domain? And here it's asking us, do we want one block or multiple blocks? Uh, let's go with the multiple block. Let's make it a bit of a challenge. Let's delete all the faces and let's rebuild this. Uh, I'll just start with the this little trailing edge domain and I'll push save face. And let's select the main domain here, push save face. And we're done with uh, that definition. Okay, we'll push done there. We want it once again to go in the Z axis. And we only want it to go one step. So make sure that says one. If it doesn't, we're going to make this, let's make it about uh, one unit thick. 
Let's see, just so we can kind of demonstrate this. And I'll push run and see what we got. Now, of course, we didn't see it because it's uh, coming out of the screen at us. And so we're going to rotate this view. There we go. What do we have here? Well, we have this extrusion, and it really is only one cell thick. Now, those cells are, are, are pretty thick, and in reality, the thickness would be pretty small, much smaller than what we're getting here. But let's see what happens when we try to select blocks. We have that block, and we have that block there. There we have it. A 2D example of a translational extrusion and a 3D example of translational extrusion. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.